Ever wondered about the chilling secrets lurking behind the glamorous facade of Hollywood's macabre icon Carolyn Jones? Today, we're diving deep into the dark and disgusting secrets she kept hidden. Carolyn Jones is a Hollywood legend whose life, despite the glitz and glamour, was veiled in struggles and concealed with chilling facts. Keep watching as we reveal the haunting truths that ultimately shaped her into an unforgettable figure in the macabre genre as Morticia Adams. Hollywood's macabre icon, Morticia Adams is a figure who transcends the realms of imagination and takes center stage as the epitome of gothic charm and timeless elegance. Morticia, with her jet black hair and captivating aura of darkness, has captured the hearts of those who appreciate a different perspective on life. But did you ever wonder why Carolyn Jones, the talented actress, decided to portray Morticia Adams on the classic TV sitcom The Adams Family? It turns out her reasons were more down-to-earth than you might think, and before we unveil those shocking reasons, let's explore Carolyn beyond her iconic role as Morticia. She was born Carolyn Sue Jones on April 28, 1930, in Amarillo, Texas. Carolyn was very close to her mother, Chloe, who was agoraphobic but her father. Julius Jones was just completely out of the picture. When she was just four years old, he abandoned the family, so she never met him after that. Carolyn's mother was not doing any job at that time, so the family ended up living with Carolyn's maternal grandparents. Now you might be surprised to know that Carolyn had lung problems from a very young age. In fact, her health issues were so serious that she was not even able to attend school regularly, and most of her education was with tutors. The environment of her grandparents' house added another layer to the challenging situation. Carolyn's grandfather was very strict and had not so great handle on anger management, so young Carolyn found solace in the quiet corners of a room Yet, behind that facade of restraint, Carolyn was a lively and ambitious girl with an intense passion for the glamorous world of Hollywood. It's worth noting that she was even named after her mother's silver screen idol, Carol Lombard. But in the confines of her own home, she felt out of place and misfit. All she could do to spend her time was listen to the music and read Hollywood fan publications, she not only loved to read about those Hollywood stars, but she started to feel a strong desire to be there in that glamorous industry. But it wasn't what her grandfather wanted for her at all. Though at her home she was never encouraged to do acting, she used to perform very well in school plays, and that's how she built that confidence. She also had lessons before moving to California. Then her life changed when she went to the prestigious acting school, Pasadena Playhouse, in 1947. However, reaching there was not a straight path. She had to deal with the strong opposition of her grandfather, who always wanted her to be a doctor or lawyer. She pleaded him, cried in front of him, but was not ready to give up on her dream. Finally, when she was at her dream place, she found herself free for the first time in her life. This was the place where she was able to completely devote herself to her passion, acting. For the next three years, she worked really hard to polish her skills. For a summer or two, she even performed with stock theatre groups at Ogunquit, Maine, and things began to work out for Carolyn. It was while performing at the Pasadena Playhouse that she was noticed by a Paramount Pictures talent scout, and she signed a six-month contract with the studio. After signing a contract with Paramount, Carolyn made her big screen debut in the aptly named 1952 film, The Turning Point, marking literally a turning point in her career. Her family celebrated with tears of joy and danced around the living room, and it was just the beginning of her journey into stardom. Between 1952 and 1959, she performed in 26 movies, including co-starring with Frank Sinatra in A Hole in the Head and Elvis Presley in King Creole, which was Elvis's last movie before he joined ARMY. Finally, Carolyn had broken into the film industry, but it came at a heartbreakingly high cost. Well, you will be shocked to know she had to go through an expensive and painful procedure of nose job to meet Hollywood's standards of beauty. Though she was already beautiful, she thought that this would have a positive impact on her career, and she was not wrong at all. Her transformation changed everything and studios started to treat her better. 
Isn't it sad that superficial beauty and her new looks caught all the attention that her well-refined skills failed to catch initially? Carolyn herself was not happy with the fact that Hollywood needs you to look conventionally beautiful to get better roles. That's why years later, she wholeheartedly grabbed the chance to be in an episode of Dr. Kildare. It was a story about a woman who undergoes a nose job and receives the attention from the same men who had previously rejected her. Carolyn found that character very close to her heart because that's what she experienced in her real life. Well, did you know that nose job wasn't the only transformation Carolyn opted for? That was not enough. Carolyn believed that blonde actresses get more attention in Hollywood. So, she not only dyed her hair blonde, but also altered her Texas accent and worked on her posture. She definitely was confident about her acting skills and never underestimated the importance of talent. But at the same time, she knew that it's your appearance that leaves your first impression on others. Indeed, her makeover had drastic consequences and she started to get bigger roles. But did she maintain that look for long? Surprisingly, no. We will talk about her next big step later in this video, but before that, let's unveil some shocking facts about her private life beyond those cameras. While her career was on a rocky path and she was making all those efforts to fit herself in the industry, there were also moments when she found herself not just weathering the storm, but soaring on cloud nine. The reason was Aaron Spelling, an aspiring writer destined to produce future hits like Beverly Hills. Carolyn firmly believed that she and Aaron were genuine, true soulmates. They both were driven individuals facing challenges in their respective fields. They shared a great sense of humor and most importantly, a deep passion for acting. She was so in love with him that she herself proposed to him, which was quite uncommon for the 1950s. Aaron reportedly taken aback, accepted, and the couple tied the knot in April 1953. However, this was not her first marriage. Many few people know about the fact that Carolyn had earlier stayed in a brief marriage with a man eight years her senior. At that time, she was just 19, and that man named Don Donaldson was her classmate at the Pasadena Playhouse. However, it proved to be a short-term school romance that didn't last more than a year. Now, after being married to Aaron Spelling, Carolyn defied the societal norms once again by refusing to have children early in the marriage. All she wanted was to focus on her career, but from time to time her health issues hindered her path to success. For example, when Carolyn was spotted for the role of Laureen Alma in the studio's blockbuster From Here to Eternity, she landed in the hospital with pneumonia and a 104-degree fever the night before her screen test. The role later went to Donna Reed, and Reed even won an Oscar for the part. Indeed, Carolyn missed that great opportunity, but she also earned some really good roles, including her role in the groundbreaking film House of Wax, which was the second ever 3D film released. Her transformation helped her to earn bigger roles later, but gradually the studio system was falling apart. Actors had to be more versatile and groomed as studios stopped investing time and energy to train actors for specific roles. So she decided to change her look once again. This time she cut her long golden hair really short and dyed it jet black for her role in The Bachelor Party. This drastic change transformed her from a sensational blonde into a beautiful and more confident brunette. Can you believe that she had only eight minutes of screen time? But for those eight minutes, she didn't just receive praise, but was also nominated for Best Supporting Actress Academy Award. Though she didn't earn that award, but her fame began to grow, and she eventually landed her biggest opportunity, a movie with none other than Elvis Presley. While filming, once again Carolyn fell ill with a fever of 103, and she had to record a kissing scene. She was so hesitant to perform, but Elvis handled the situation with his amazing sense of humor. As it was his last film before joining the army, he humorously quipped, That's all right, maybe it'll get me out of the army. Despite all those challenges, Carolyn's performance received great reviews, and the movie became a hit. It seemed like her career was now on a smooth track after all the efforts she made to stay in that industry, but keeping the momentum going was never easy. 
By the 1960s, her career offers dwindled because she was now in her mid-30s. Hollywood started to consider her old and outdated. Now, it was not just her career that was in trouble. Meanwhile, her husband's writing career soared, causing an imbalance that strained their relationship. Sadly, the couple divorced in 1964, and 34 years old, Carolyn found herself on the verge of an emotional breakdown. Frustrated, divorced and out of work, she had no clue how things would get back to normal. That's when she turned to television, despite her initial reservations about television, as she always wanted to be known for her film career. However, she never knew that it would be a television show that would mortalize her legacy. It was the role of Morticia in The Addams Family, the TV show which ran from 1964 to 1966. The Addams Family was inspired by Charles Addams's single-panel comic strips in The New Yorker, but with a macabre twist. The concept of taking a seemingly normal sitcom and infusing it with dark humor and unconventional characters was quite innovative for its time. Carolyn Jones, who played the role of Morticia Adams, faced the challenge of bringing the character from the comic strips to life. Playing Morticia wasn't just about capturing the essence of Adams' iconic drawings, it was about infusing the character with a seductive allure that defied the norms of 1960s television. Amidst the absurdity and black humor, Carolyn had to portray Morticia as someone entirely comfortable in her own skin, radiating warmth and love, making it a demanding role for any actor. Morticia's costuming was also quite interesting, highlighting how even the wardrobe contributed to the character's essence. The narrow skirt and limited movement created a sense of calmness and elegance, emphasizing Morticia's poise and comfort in her own skin. One of the key dynamics in the Adams family was the chemistry between Morticia and her on-screen husband, Gomez, portrayed by John Astin. Their on-screen performance left audiences convinced that there was more to their relationship beyond acting. The show's gothic aesthetic and quirky charm became iconic, influencing fashion, popularizing the acceptance of eccentric humor and leaving an enduring legacy that continues to inspire revivals and adaptations. The enduring popularity of the Adams family secured Carolyn Jones's place in television history and left an indelible mark on her career. However, towards the late 1970s, Carolyn began finding work in theater productions. Though she had a deep connection with theater, as it always reminded her of her Pasadena Playhouse days acting on stage, the reason for returning to the theater was not renewing those memories. It was because her career took a downturn after gaining fame for her role as Morticia. People only wanted to see her as Morticia, and she felt stuck with that character. Being typecast made it difficult for her to find new roles. Meanwhile, her romantic entanglement with her vocal coach, Herbert Green, made her life more miserable. After their marriage, he controlled her life and hindered her career, and it took her seven years to break free from that toxic marriage. Well, to break away from the typecasting and challenges in her personal life, Carolyn tried something different. She decided to write a novel titled Twice Upon a Time. This novel explored aspects of human relationships and romance that were considered bold and daring at that time. She delved into some shocking revelations about her own challenges related to intimate matters. She mentioned that putting these experiences on paper had a therapeutic effect on her. In an interview a year later, Carolyn shared the fallout from the novel. Some people distanced themselves from her because of it. She explained that the novel strained relationships, with some feeling insulted for not being included and others for being included but not recognizing themselves. Interestingly, she mentioned that the novel began as a kind of satire, aiming to mock the dishonesty she perceived in other novels of that category. However, as she delved deeper into her writing, it became a genuine and serious project for her. She found a sense of fulfillment in communicating directly with the audience through her writing without the need for those cameras, crew or other devices. Due to its unconventional nature, the novel achieved some success and also generated curiosity. However, 
it did not do Carolyn's acting career any favors. It was met with criticism, particularly in Hollywood, where it was seen as a thinly veiled indictment of the industry. The explicit content in the novel, lacking the subtlety associated with Carolyn's iconic character Morticia, offended some in the industry, contributing to a bit of a negative impact on her overall career. Well, let's talk about the days when she made a comeback after a long break, when she restarted her career at the age of 46, after bidding farewell to her unhappy marriage with Herbert Green, she met Peter Bailey Britton, the man who brought a renewed sense of fulfillment into her life. While juggling iconic series like Wonder Woman, The Love Boat and Fantasy Island, Carolyn not only found her professional stride, but also discovered personal bliss with Peter. However, the only puzzle piece yet to fall into place was her health. A series of frequent illnesses, including episodes of vomiting blood, revealed ulcers as the reason. She even once went through a surgical removal of a significant portion of her stomach. Yet, with unwavering dedication to her profession, Carolyn took on a leading role in the soap opera capital in 1981, but a dark cloud loomed over her newfound success. Diagnosed with colon cancer, Carolyn faced the challenge head-on. Shockingly, this was not breaking news for Carolyn herself. Yes, those severe stomach issues were a result of colon cancer, not ulcers. It was already diagnosed, but she kept it a secret, attributing her condition to ulcers. She even went through the painful procedure of chemotherapy all alone. Now, when she thought she had regained control of her life, the cancer had returned. Despite her aggressive battle and relentless spirit, Carolyn's body ceased to respond to treatments. Medically, there was nothing more to be done. She knew that her time was limited, so Carolyn made it a priority to fill each moment with joy. She wanted to surround herself with only love. So, in September 1982, Carolyn tied the knot with her boyfriend, Peter Bailey Britton. Carolyn's indomitable spirit left a lasting impression on those who worked alongside her, and the wedding garnered much admiration from her fellow cast members. This unwavering spirit was visible in her professional life as well. As her cancer spread and her frailty became apparent, Carolyn continued to act on the capital. Even from a wheelchair, she continued to breathe life into her scenes for the season. She knew she was dying but wanted to act as long as she could. In the face of mortality, she epitomized courage, leaving an enduring legacy both on and off the screen. Then, in July of 1983, Carolyn's battle with the insidious disease took a turn for the worse as she slipped into a coma. August 3rd marked the day when the curtain finally fell on her remarkable journey, and Carolyn Jones breathed her last at the age of 53. The world lost a vibrant soul, but her legacy endured far beyond the confines of time. Even today, many years after her departure, Carolyn's presence resonates through the captivating characters she portrayed in both movies and iconic roles like Morticia Adams in The Adams Family. Her legacy lives on as her contributions continue to captivate and inspire new generations, reminding us that Carolyn Jones was not just an actress, she was a timeless and integral part of cinematic history. It's impossible to ignore the haunting echoes of her struggles and the chilling facts that defined her tragic journey. Today, we remember Carolyn Jones not just for her on-screen prowess, but for the resilience she displayed in the face of an unrelenting reality. So, what aspects of her journey resonated with you the most? Drop your thoughts in the comments below and don't forget to hit that subscribe button for more video updates. Until next time, stay tuned.